They have to be careful with the cultural aspects, like uh, the religion, uh, the women, um, when to sit, when to stand up, when to drink coffee, if they should eat their food or not. Mister, I told you, me take months, deliver everything on paper. Okay. I mean, need money. I pay my people. My people write against me. You know, I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to pay for this. You like Turkish coffee, Mister? Very good. It's Somali bean, but they call it Turkish coffee. So we try to teach them that uh, even if you're not hungry and they offer you food, you gotta try it. You gotta eat it. You gotta take your coffee. Yeah. You, you, you Turkish coffee you drink? We want them to adapt as much as they can to feel comfortable, not to be nervous. So when they go out in the real world, they can really interact from a strength point instead of everything new to them. Me, me go with you, mister. Me go with you. Eagle Flag is pretty much preparatory for CRG personnel, contingency response group personnel to evaluate themselves and for us to evaluate them on their capabilities of opening an airbase and that's pretty much what the CRG mission is. While we're out, out here for us, we're in a simulated country of uh, Nassour, the kingdom of Nassour. On behalf of the king, we're here to defeat, deter, or destroy any terrorist operations. We're here to help protect our sovereignty. Shift fire, eyes that way, night personnel coming behind. The reason they need it is because if they actually had to do this real world, like if they they called upon, if the big air force called upon the CRG to go out and put up an airbase, if we didn't receive the training that we did here, we would have never been able to put up that airfield and run ops as smoothly as we did out there. Watch your head, right here. I know in the Expeditionary Center we have a saying that we use, it's air power from the ground up. It's great that you can fly airplanes in and, and drop bombs and all, that's, that's phenomenal. But if you can't secure that runway and that airhead, those planes will never be able to come in and land without the support of security. I'm responsible for about 24 security forces members um, of different uh, ages and skill sets. What this has helped me do is assess their capabilities and their ability to understand what the mission is and execute that mission so I can see what assets I really have when it's time to go out the door. Roger, at this time, there are two KIA 108 personnel, one injured, 108. Stop it at two KIA 108 personnel. For every gallon of sweat, it's one ounce of blood. So I'd rather you dump gallons of sweat here so that there's little bloodshed if they had to do this real world, no kidding, under a hostile environment. Most of our uh, airmen and soldiers, we would think, have already deployed, but that's not always the case. And so some new folks with some more senior folks, and so learning from people who have been there and done that is, is one aspect of it. We're going to collapse the perimeter slowly until we get in the road. We're going to evacuate to the cargo yard. We're going to do accountability at the cargo yard. As you go back, you need to take that to people going back. What we're really trying to do is expose uh, our units to the team building that it takes and building from that the larger organization that is going to go off and uh, represent our nation. Yep, he's going to give you the signal hat off. You commence firing and moving in on ECP. Okay. For FOB procedures and how to defend a piece of land, I feel like this has been uh, one of the best learning experiences that my men have cooperated with. Whatever I do, if it could save one American soldier life, I'm very happy. That's all I care about. I want to see our troops come back in one piece. <laughs>